uh, welcome to next lecture today we will continue our study of uh, gaussian uh, random variable in last lecture i introduced the concept of central limit theorem and motivated why gaussian distribution is important for modeling the noise now we would like to study some more properties let me recall first of all let's denote uh, you know the ra gaussian random variable with uh, x okay and its probability density function uh, pdf uh, by fx of x now first we will define something called standard gaussian random variable what do we mean by standard if the mean of gaussian random variable which we denote by mu is zero and variance of gaussian random variable variance you know is defined as expected value of x minus mu square and that is one and the pdf of standard gaussian random variable can be written as this e to the power minus x square by 2 so this is the standard gaussian random variable uh, you will see that we will define various uh, concepts using standard gaussian random variable and whenever a random variable is not standard we will convert it to the standard one i will show you that procedure later and it is customary in in literature to note standard random variable by z you will see it in various case standard gaussian random variable by z so i will start using that notation so i can uh, denote it by z so the pdf can be written as in terms of the letter z now what does a non-standard mean non-standard means something like this first of all you see if i denote suppose x is equal to uh, you know uh, sigma times z plus mu okay uh, so let's check first of all what is the mean of uh, this x mean of x is uh, mean of sigma z plus mu okay uh, the expectation is the linear operator so we can write it as expectation of uh, sigma times z plus mu is a constant so no meaning of expectation here so it will come as it is then sigma is the constant we can keep it here times expected value of z uh, plus mu right now what is the mean of z z is standard gaussian random variable whose mean is zero so this is zero so mean of x is mu okay so that is one thing now what is the variance of x variance of x so first of all you you will recall the definition of variance so that is expected value of x minus mean of x square okay we know the mean of x now that is mu so it is x minus mu square okay now x is uh, given by sigma z plus mu then minus mu square so what we get is expected value of sigma square z square which is sigma square expected value of z square now what is expected value of z square you know that variance of z or the standard random variable is one okay so what is the variance of z expected value of z minus variance of z that is zero sorry sorry sorry, sorry. that is variance of z is one right so mean mean of what i am writing so uh, expected value of z minus mean square okay mean is zero so that is expected value of z square and that variance is one so expected value of z square is one so i can write sigma square so variance of general gaussian random variable is sigma square so we had a random variable z with mean zero variance one there is a notation for it actually gaussian random variable is also called normal random variable okay it's also called standard normal random variable and distribution this distribution is also called normal distribution okay the reason for calling this normal is it is it uh, basically when you have a large population the normal behavior of large population follows gaussian distribution now there is a notation for it when we say z is 
a normal or gau standard Gaussian and a variable mean 0 variance 1. Here is one shortcut we will use this notation repeatedly. First of all there is a symbol like this. This symbol means is distributed as. Okay is distributed as then the normal distribution we use this fancy n letter this mean is now it is a gaussian distribution then first parameter will be the mean and second will be the variance okay now in case of standard random variable we will say that it is distributed as normal that is gaussian distribution zero mean variance one and when we write x is equal to sigma z plus mu then it means x is also gaussian normal but mean is mu now variance is sigma square what will be the distribution of this x you know the distribution of z, z. so distribution of x we can easily derive so first of all uh, you have to you know write f x of x okay and that by definition is the derivative of the cdf okay this one now what is the cdf first of all cdf of x by definition cdf is probability that x is less than or equal to small x you can go back to the video lectures of probability and go and get the definition now what is this x this x is sigma z plus mu less than or equal to x okay i am showing you step by step procedure because this will be used for later on also so this will be equal to probability of uh, z less than or equal to i can subtract mu on both sides divide by c right now uh, we know we know the pdf of z hence we know the cdf of z so z is a standard gaussian random variable and uh, so let me make it small box here so z is a standard gaussian random variable mean 0 variance 1 with pdf given by 1 over under root of 2 pi e to the power minus z square by 2 and the cdf fz of z is by definition probability is capital z less than equal to small z there is a standard notation for it that is phi phi of z this phi is a notation for cdf of standard normal or gaussian random variable okay phi of z so it means we can write this in terms of phi now instead of z we have this whole term phi of x minus mu divided by sigma okay and uh, this actually is if you see this phi of z it is integral uh, so from minus infinity to z uh, 1 over under root of 2 pi e to the power minus t square by 2 dt you may say what is this t square basically see z is the upper limit of this integral you should not use the same variable inside so you should use any other variable which is called dummy variable inside because finally it will be integrated with respect to t and the final uh, expression will be in terms of z but unfortunately this integral is not evaluate evaluative we can't evaluate it in closed form you can't find any function whose derivative will be e to the power minus t square by 2 so hence what we sometimes do is we prepare tables we give different values of z and do numerical computation numerical integration and get the value of cdf at different points now this is th this is our f x of x the cdf of a general gaussian and a variable in terms of standard one so phi is the cdf of standard gaussian and a variable so it is equal to this now how to get pdf f x of x you know that you have to differentiate this with respect to x right so d upon dx of fx of x okay so this will be uh, so so when you differentiate this so let me first do one thing i will differentiate it so what will come outside is uh, you know 1 over sigma in fact uh, yeah 1 over sigma will come out 1 over sigma and then 
phi dash of x minus mu by sigma now what is phi dash phi dash of x minus mu by sigma it is the derivative of this integral in minus infinity to what is the upper limit here it is x minus mu by sigma and then 1 over under root of 2 pi e to the power minus t square by 2 dt okay now you will use what is very famous in calculus called newton leibniz for some of you might know it and some of you might not know it let me tell you suppose you have an integral suppose uh, f of t uh, and you integrate it from uh, suppose g1 of t g1 of x to g2 of x dt okay and uh, you denote this as phi of x psi of x and you want to find d psi upon dx so the newton leibniz formula says that what you should do is you should first take the derivative of this g2 of x times and f of g2 of uh, x minus take derivative of g1 of g1 dash of x then f of g1 of x okay so this is the uh, formula for uh, computing this newton leibniz formula uh, now if we apply same here what are the different parameters right now so we have f of t as 1 over under root of 2 pi e to the power minus t square by 2 you have g2 of x as x minus mu by sigma and you have g uh, g1 of x as uh minus infinity so first of all g1 of x actually is constant so g1 dash of x will be zero okay so we don't need to evaluate this part so d psi upon dx will be in our case uh g2 dash of x so it's one by sigma f of so e to the power minus instead of t you have to put x minus mu by sigma then here to square okay this is what we have to put so and and this is one over uh, one one over under root two pi okay now what you get is the pdf fx of x will be now uh, one over sigma then one over under root two pi e to the power minus x minus mu divided by sigma square okay which we can write as 1 over under root of 2 pi sigma square e to the power minus x minus mu divided by uh, you know sigma square here is 2 okay so this is the uh, cdf sorry pdf of stand, uh, general gaussian random variable with mean mu i can write normal mean mu variance sigma square okay there is one more important uh, function which is very very commonly used uh, in the study of beta rate and other expressions in wireless communication and information theory that's called q function so q function is actually the opposite of cdf so in q function we ask this question that what is the probability suppose you take a standard gaussian random variable z what is the probability that this z is greater than some value small z okay so that actually will become integral from z to infinity 1 over under root of 2 pi e to the power minus t square by 2 dt okay so this has a special symbol it's called q of z and this is called q function okay this is defined here for standard gaussian random variable now suppose you have x is equal to sigma z plus mu now x is not a standard it is normal mean mu sigma square now what if we want to find what is the probability x is greater than or equal to some small x so again i will express it in terms of z or probability sigma z plus mu is greater than small x finally i can rearrange the terms as z is greater than x minus mu by sigma now this is the standard definition of standard uh, q function instead of z we have x minus mu by uh, sigma so i can write it as q of 
x minus mu by sigma. So what is done in literature is that q function again we can't compute this integral this one. So we make tables of it. Okay, we give different values of z. Suppose we start from minus two, minus one, uh, one point, minus one point one, uh, zero, zero point one, zero point five, and we make tables. There are q, uh, you know, q tables, uh, which which can be easily found in the literature. Here is one example. So uh, this table is computed for zero less than x less than nine. We can see that if x is zero. It is 0.5. It is different values, okay. And these can be earlier. It were computed, you know, via calculators. Now you can easily compute it in MATLAB or Octave. Uh, you can easily compute it. Now with this, with, with these tools, we can now proceed for the analysis of bit error rate easily. There will not be any problem now uh, because you are now well acquainted with uh, the terms like standard Gaussian random variable. Uh, Q function and other things, and if we need some more properties of uh, you know Gaussian random variable, uh, that we will do whenever we need that. Okay, so next we will do the analysis of bit error rate for BPSK modulation with Gaussian noise. Thank you.